Mornings are magic. I know that no matter what's going on in my life, if I'm waking up in the morning and I'm excited for that first cup of coffee and that thing I'm going to do as soon as I wake up, then I know I can get through anything and I know it's going to be a good day because I'm going to set my day on a really firm foundation. So today I thought we'd start this Pavering Land pep talk podcast with a little quick discussion of morning routines. I know that morning routines are by no means a new concept, but they're a, they're something that is endlessly fascinating to me. Anything that has to do with planning a routine and the art and science of living is what I am all about. So I have had so many different morning routines over the years, and I've completely just rejiggered my morning routine for 2020. So I thought I would share it with you, and I hope it inspires you for your routine. So for me, I wake up naturally and I'm usually an early riser. I set my coffee maker to go off at 6 a.m. A lot of times like this this morning I got up at 4 just because I was ready for it and um, you know I'll go turn it on and bypass the auto settings but by and large I get up around 6 a.m. The first thing I see when I wake up is my vision boards. So right now I have two vision boards. Uh, I am all about making a vision board for every area of my life that I'm currently focusing on. So right now I have two. One is for my move home to my hometown of Napa, which is happening actually a week from today. And then I have one that is all around the way I want Paper and Glam, my business to evolve uh, into this new season and through you know the next like six months. So I created my vision boards in January and as one does, and that is on the 2021 Paper and Glam Season the Living list. And those, and if you're like, what is that? Um, we as a community are all about seasonal living, and that just means living really rhythmically through the seasons and creating traditions and instilling kind of that backbone into our year that creates a, a rhythm that's very sustaining and very grounding. So um not to get too sidetracked on that, but we do have a seasonal living community on Facebook and we're all over Facebook if you want to learn more. So back to vision boards. So I made it the first week of January and I've been planning a move home to Napa for a long time, but it just never came to be. And within two weeks of creating this vision board, I had a house in Napa, which is just incredible. Um, and yeah, I'm moving a week from tomorrow. So it's kind of just like a re-envisioning of um, my life for a new era as I leave Los Angeles and um, begin again in Napa. So I am a firm believer in putting those as the first thing you see when you wake up. It also makes me really excited to get up and know that like there's things to build and there's things to look forward to and like I can manifest whatever whatever I choose to, if I just don't put any boundaries on myself. So after that, I go make bulletproof coffee and I climb back in bed and I start prepping for the God and Glam live stream. That's every morning at 8.30 a.m. on the God and Glam YouTube channel. And we have a seasonal Bible study that walks through um, that walks through the life of Christ um, with seasonality. So right now we're getting ready to head into Lent, which is uh, Jesus's march to the cross. And so that's what I'm working on now. Um, so I usually spend about two hours, about 6.30 to 8.30 prepping for that. We go live at 8.30 and we're on from 8.30 to 9 Pacific time. And at 9 a.m. I do my most important task. So it won't be anything that's, you know, too lengthy, but that thing that's kind of nagging, like that email that I need kind of to put a lot of thought into, or, um, you know, like something that a product I need to release in the shop or just, I just like kind of get some momentum in my day with kind of tasks that I might be putting off from like day to day. So that usually, it's usually about a 30 minute task or so, or, you know, I'll knock out a few if they're smaller tasks. And then at 930, I head to the gym and I, in the past had a lot of guilt around going to the gym at 930. I felt like, what am I doing? You know, taking the most productive part of my work day and, and working out like I should be doing that at 5am. You know, I should be, you know, I, I should be, I should be. And I just realized I need, as an entrepreneur, I need a morning routine that works for me, that fuels my day, that fuels my life, that works with my natural energy rhythms, not what, you know, works for other people or what I should be doing in my own mind. So I work out at 9.30. I usually 
work out and then sit in the sauna for a little bit. And um, I'm usually back in my home by about 11. And um, I just kind of get myself put together and I'm back in the office at noon. And then I'm like really energized and I'm like so ultra productive from noon to six. Like I'm a million times more productive from noon to six than I would have been if I did not work out. And something I always say and tell myself about working out is that working out creates time. It doesn't take time and it makes me more efficient, right? So that right there, it just makes me clear. There's just a million health benefits, which I'm sure you guys know. So anyway, um, that's something that I've come, come around to lately. Just in this year, I'm like letting go of guilt around what I think my life should look like or what I, how I think I should be building things. Um, so let's see, then, then I like get into my work day. As soon as I sit down, I try to do that next most important task that maybe is like a little bit of a longer, um, a longer undertaking. So whether that's like filming a video or working on design for new collections, we have a planner line, sticker line, we release a new collection every month. So it's kind of on this perpetual treadmill of like making sure all the deadlines are met and we get everything to production. And um, so yeah, one of the two. And then um, right around like 3.30, I usually kind of go into a more administrative mode. That is a time of day when I'm kind of done like creating new things. So I'll either like hop on a live stream with you guys. Like at 3 p.m. we usually do the, like I'll do like a patron live stream for book club or I'll do one in one of our Facebook groups just to connect with everybody and just say hey and and all of that. Or I'll just go right into shipping because that's, you know, pretty administrative. It doesn't take a lot of like creativity. It's just more attention to detail. And then um, at the at the end of the day to like wrap up the day, I plan my next day, uh, and that is that's kind of my workday morning routine. Um, I guess it was supposed to be morning routines, and I just kind of gave you my whole workday. But you know, if you count the time that I work on God and Glam, which which I do, like it's about a twelve hour workday. Um, over the years, I've gotten so many questions about how I do it all, and that's always something that's endlessly fascinating to me is how people who seem to be holding a lot down, like how do they fit it all in, right? Um, My life is fairly uncomplicated. You know, I'm single, I don't have kids, uh, I live alone. So it's easy for me to kind of go heads down and, and get, get accomplished what I, what I want to accomplish. But I think if I have a pep talk for you guys today, it's to just not have a rigid idea of how your day should go or how you should be doing things. Um, Really like as I've learned more about like the Enneagram and human design and birth charts and just all of these tools we have access to that inform how we're wired and how we should live in light of that. I have really let go a lot of, of a lot of just the ideas I had around like what makes a productive day because the, I was kind of trying to like pigeonhole myself into like this idea of a productive day. So i.e. waking up at five and studying the Bible and then going and working out and like getting ready for the day and being in the office at nine and, you know, like working nine to five. And it's like, why? That's, I became an entrepreneur so that I could have a more naturally flowing day. And yet I've spent the last years like trying to like continue that routine because I felt like I needed to for some reason, like I needed like that rubber stamp when in reality I do even more with my own kind of like personal morning routine. Um, but I held on to that kind of old like standard for so long. I think it's so interesting the way that I can hold on to like old narratives or old stories. I don't know if you catch yourself doing that in your life, but it's just, it's like they just hold us back and it's just getting that clarity around, what's holding us back can just be so incredibly helpful. And one of the ways I really facilitate clarity in my own life is getting up early and really from like 6.30 to 8.30, spending that time with the Lord, spending time in prayer, spending time just thinking and manifesting and just praying into my goals and my ambitions and thinking about like, why do I want to do these things? What about this lights me up? And that, that clarity first thing in the morning, even though it can feel so like luxurious to the point of like frivolous to spend like 6.30 to 8.30, like literally just like reading and writing and thinking, but it's really the foundation of success and always has been. Even when I worked a corporate job, I did the same thing. 
I, except it was like six to eight usually. And a lot of times it'd be interrupted by calls because I had clients on the East Coast. And I know that it can seem like, oh, well, that's easy for you to say, Lisa Marie, you're an entrepreneur. Like you have, you know, complete control of your schedule. But um, those of you who are familiar with my story know I worked full time and went to school full time from 16 to 22. And then I worked full time and then I worked nights and weekends in retail. And then I had a 60 hour a week job. And then I had that job on top of paper and glam. And it wasn't until I was 30 that I was self-employed, which is by very young, of course, but, and then I was working like 80 hours to sustain it all. So, um, (laughs) like it's, it's always, you know, we're never going to feel like we have time to do all the things we want to do or that like circumstances are perfect. And that's okay because the best, most creative things come out of those boundaries and a lot of times those blocks. So, I hope this little iteration of my morning routine uh, was inspiring for you. I would love to hear about your morning routine, whether that's like on Facebook or email or however you guys normally connect with me. Um, I just love engaging with you and just living in community and learning to live well together because that's really what it's all about. So go put your hot pink dent in the world or whatever color, (laughs) whatever color you have dent you want to put in this world. And I will be back with another episode. And I'm so excited to hear what you think of the inaugural episode of the Paper and Glam Pep Talk podcast. Until next time, have a beautiful day.